All right, this is a new, one of my first cars I've owned. I wanted to show you guys, might help out. I mean, I don't know if anybody's interested in body work or anything, but this is actually 1987 Cougar. This was my first car I've ever owned. This is the XR7. Um, it's actually been repainted once. Well, yeah, once, twice, sorry, twice, twice. Um, so what we're doing is we're restoring it. I put, this thing is 5.0 factory car, automatic. Um, I did a look, as you can tell there in the wheels, these are Mustang wheels, which I took and painted the centers black, and I put a red Cougar emblem in them. All it is is a vinyl. Um, I mainly wanted to put this on the channel just so I have the videos look back on because, you know, I've had this car for so long, but it might help some people out. If it's something you guys be interested in, I'll show you some of the body work, how to do body work, which I know a lot of you know how. But anybody, you know, I went to Votech for three years, but that's been how many, nine, ten, nine years ago. But, you know, I might be a little rusty and might not do everything 100%, but, you know, I'm going to take my time on it. And the plans for this thing here is I talked to my boss at work. I had to work at a junkyard. Uh, 55 acre junkyard and it's all newer stuff and stuff like that and he can get some older stuff i am planning on putting a 5.0 high output in this because this is the efi version this is a speed density version so it is only automatic and i can't do no upgrades to if i do any upgrades it doesn't have a mass airflow sensor it really reads off the, the you know your o2 sensors but um I want to, like I said, put, get a uh, motor swap out of a Mustang, like a 88 to 94 Mustang with the 5L. We're going to turn this thing into a standard, which it's very simple. It's the same. These are the same platform as a Mustang. It's just different body panels, and I think the length's a little bit different than a Mustang. But um, this thing has 5 lug conversion, 95 spindles off of a Mustang. Uh, like I said, these wheels here are 17 inch. These are off like an 02, I think, Mustang or something like that. The size that I run on these are 245, 45, 17s, and they clearly don't rub. Um, in the back here, we also have the same things. They're all the same size tires. Usually you get like a bigger in the back, a smaller in the front. These are all same size. And it actually has a 95 rear end in it out of a Mustang. 373 gears uh posi locker now that's the original it's not like a you know a full spool or you know completely all-time posi or it's just your regular lemon slip posi and but um i just got a bunch of stuff in here for now until we get it all done i'm trying to get them it, it does run at the moment but the motor uh it shakes real bad and i think the motor's just bad it's it's an old motor and it wasn't the original one in the car. I just had it laying around and you know, it does, it runs okay, but it's not enough for me to put it on the road. I'd be afraid to take it. So I figure if I want to move it around, then I can move it around. But for now, uh, it's staying in there till we get everything done. And I'm going to do the whole, my other plan is the underneath of this thing, I'm doing the whole underneath and chassis saver. Um, I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. That stuff is amazing. This is back here. Oh, I think I might have moved it. It could be somewhere else. But if you go on and look up chassis saver, that stuff, I swear by it. I put it on my truck. It's been on there for a couple months. Still hasn't come off. But um, get a chance to check it out. That stuff is pretty amazing. I mean, it... It looks like that when it dries. I don't know if you guys can see the finish, it's kind of hard to see. But I mean, it, it dries hard. Um, so I just wanted to put this on my channel too. You know, we are going to start doing some build videos on this. Uh, I'm still waiting on the parts car and stuff, but you know, I gotta. I want to get this thing completely sanded down, paint, get ready for paint. I got some more body work to do, you know, like around the wheels and 
finish that up and some more dents, but I want to get all that fixed, get this thing ready. I started stripping the bumper because it actually, it's weird, it, it actually peeled. I know this looks like it's peeling, but that's because I put that stripper on it, and you know, but the paint actually peeled. I don't know if there's any other spots I could show you, but it, it peeled off the front bumper and stuff, which... You know, it might have been maybe I didn't prep it right when I did paint it. You know, it was back in Votec, but it happened after I hit the deer. I mean, he might be able to see, like, see that right there? That's kind of what it did. But on this here, when I hit the deer, it actually crinkled. This wasn't the original fender. It had the original. It's back here, but it, like, creased it, and I couldn't get it straight again, so I got this one off another guy. Um, he was about three hours away from me, but got that off of him. And I got another badge for it, but I need to find a tail light yet and stuff. A couple little interior pieces. The lighting does suck, but you know, I had this car for a long time and it'd just be nice to do some videos on it, you know. See what people think, you know what I mean? It's, I really don't care. It's my car, I like to just have it, you know. Some videos on it to remember it or whatever, you know, eventually down the road and but I want to also do the motor swap and stuff. Show you guys how to do that. Which I know there's videos all over for that. But you know maybe somebody's building one. Not sure what to do. And what's nice too is. You know not a lot of people have Cougars. Or they have questions. You know Mustang. There's all kinds of stuff out there. But Thunderbird and Cougar. There's some stuff. But there's not much at all. So you know I, if I can help another guy that has a Cougar or Thunderbird. Not sure what to do or. Maybe somebody tells him, yeah, you know, you can do that, and he starts doing it, and it's different. Like, I know the header clearance is different on these. Um, I hear a lot of people want long tube headers on Thunderbird and Cougar. It says they fit, but then they put them in, and they hit the steering shaft and all this other stuff, and then you got to get another steering shaft or kink the headers. or It's just a pain, so I'd rather, you know, do it for myself, fix the issue, and whether if you got to put a different subframe in it, like a... A tubular K member or maybe you do gotta buy a different you know uh, steering shaft for it to clear it but you know we'll just like I said we'll do some videos might help somebody out you know if a lot of you guys don't really you know want to watch it no big deal it's whatever but I wanted to put this on our channel because you know this is my car I like it and I figured heck why not you know it might be a little different than the dirty stuff which we won't quit on the derby stuff. I just did the aftermath of that. So I figured we would uh, do something on the Cougar here. Uh, I'm putting the brakes back on and stuff now because I had to actually fix. You probably can't see up in there. The shock tire rotted out. So I took steel and box steel and made it all. Fixed all that. Put the, everything back in. And I had everything on hook so I didn't get the brakes back on yet. As you can see there. That's some redneck engineering there. Tie rod bolt fell out. Cause I didn't put a cotter key in it. Or a cotter pin, not a cotter key. Um, damn thing fell out and then they take a special thread, I guess, or like a metric thread or fine thread. And uh, ended up, um, I just put a pair of vice grips on it. Cause I gotta replace the tie rod anyways. Cause it got bent when it fell. Which I have one in the car, but I just want to show you that, you know. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And I already had to do that once because it fell out once before because the same thing, dummy me forgot to put a you know a pin in it and just left to go with that and it vibrated loose and come out one day, but not when I was driving, thank god when I went to pull out. It bent and bent in a little bit too and uh so I think next time we'll make sure we put the, the quarter pin back in. And anybody else doing that, remember to put that back in, it does it helps. <laughs> but all right that's the video on this so this will be like a build, little build series i guess i'll do you know i was thinking about ls swapping it i don't know what everybody thinks about that i know the four guys will probably hate me for that but ever since that derby car over there and that ls it's just been one of them things i've kind of wanted to do because of the hell i think they're like 250 or th almost 300 horse for like a 4.8 or a 5.3, I could be wrong too, but somewhere in there, let's just say 200 to 300 horse. That way we know we're close. You know, in stock 5.0 with like the EFI setups, they only come 150, like what's in this now. I mean, I'll show you quick under the hood, but I think it's 150. And uh, I mean, it runs good. I can't complain. It's a good running car. 
it'll get you where you need to go. Oh, I think I did find a chassis saver, guys. Right there's a chassis saver. Check that out sometime. Uh, see the tape up top? A lot of these guys say on this stuff here, it, mo it dries by the, the moisture in the air and stuff. Um, you can, if you crack this open, and say you use half the gallon, you don't use the whole gallon, you put that lid back on, you will never get that lid off. It literally, uh, I don't, unless you pull it in pieces, that's the only way you're getting it off. So take a drill, drill a hole down at the bottom, and drill a hole at the top, and you have your breather to dump out, and you have your spot to dump the stuff into a cup or a paint cup or whatever you want, and then just make sure you put tape back on it. And I mean, it's, it hasn't dried up yet. Now, like I said, I only had it for like two months, but you know, that stuff's really good. I'll have to show We'll do a video of the truck because I want to do like a a before video. Well, not before. I, I have some pictures I might post up. But um, I had on my truck, I did that. I sprayed it on. And uh, we're going to do like a year. I might do like six months later, then a year later, just to see how that product holds up. I'm not sponsored or nothing. I just, I really like the product so far. And I figured heck, share it with everybody if it's as good as it is. And then. You know, I think it was a hundred and some dollars a gallon. It sound, it's crazy expensive, but if you think about it, not really because it sounds expensive because a hundred bucks and I by far don't make, you know, a lot of money. But, um, you know, think about it. You go to Walmart, spend six, seven dollars on a can. Some of them even go up to twelve dollars. Ten cans, yeah, you might do your vehicle, but is it really going to hold up? I've done it before. I bought probably ten cans, did a hole underneath of my truck. Winter was over, it was all rusted off. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do with this here. I'm going to undercoat the hole underneath of this. I'm, I was going to do underneath the fenders and stuff. I'm going to just get what I can get with a brush up under the wheel wells. And then uh, I'll use a spray gun to spray the other stuff, you know, cover the car, spray it, and do the hole underneath the whole way from the back to the front. But I'll show you the motor here and then we'll gonna head in for the night because it's kind of chilly out but there's the stock 5l yes i know it has a mass airflow sensor there i was gonna do the conversion i have not got to it yet and uh we're gonna get another cold air intake that one ain't bad but it's kind of rigged together and just don't look very good but like i said it runs it just i uh, got a brand new radiator three row rad in it it's got a uh, MSD distributor stock uh, ignition module, and then the only other thing it's got on it is uh, Ford Racing headers or Ford Racing, geez, Ford Racing plugs. And I got headers down there, and uh, they are actually from eBay. But I'll tell you guys a little secret: the hundred-dollar headers on eBay, they look good, but they tarnish right away. Which, whatever. I mean, it, it's going to happen. But when you go to bolt them on and they're warped and the bolt holes don't line up, it kind of sucks. So if I were you, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna spend money on anything, get a good quality pair of headers. Don't buy. And I'm not telling you to go buy, you know, four hundred dollar, what's a pace setter headers or, you know, I mean you can if you have the money. Which don't get me wrong, I'd love to buy pace setter or uh, BBKs or. Um, some of the other ones I can't remember off the top of my head. You got, you know, you, you know, you know your, I think Headman, they're pretty cheap. I think them are like 170. They ain't bad, but I also heard too, they're kind of, they don't put a good coating on, so you got to coat them and that stuff. That's why they're a little cheaper, but you know, they, they're still a really good header. But um, other than that, like I said, we got some plans. I might even end up eventually switching out to a tubular K member, cool over, I might do that stuff too, but Right now, I really just want it back on the road. I miss driving it. There's, I don't know if you guys, well, a lot of you car guys will know. I mean, you can't beat an old car driving on the road. I mean, I like this new stuff, but, you know, this car here just cruising down the road and the sound of it, it's it you can't beat it, you know. I mean, I know it's only in 80s. I've drove older cars, but, you know, dream car is 67 Shelby GT500. So maybe one day we'll have that too because... I'd go crazy having that thing. I don't think I'd ever leave it. But, uh, yeah, this one here, like I said, I had a while and probably gonna head in here. I'll give you guys some more updates on it. Uh, I'm gonna try and get out here tomorrow. I gotta help my dad put a tranny in this stupid Taurus because it 
I told him not to buy it, but he don't listen to me. And of course, transmission, two transmissions, three motors, rocker panels. Oh heck, the list goes on. I can keep going and going and going. But you know what I mean? Um, so we'll just give you an update on this. This thing does have true duels. It has true duels, uh, straight pipe, back in the Super 44 Flowmaster mufflers. And it, once it, you know, we get it moved up, I'll show you guys the exhaust on the, on the lift here. We'll put it up on the lift. And I'll show you how I do the exhaust, but um, it's two and a half all the way back into the mufflers, two and a half tails. And it's got the uh, hideaway pipes. You can't see them stick out. They up in the corner, the back corners, they stick up in and they're kind of flared and you can't see them. And I really like the look of that. Like I had the other pipes, they were, when they originally done the exhaust, they did two and a half all the way back into the muffler. They come out of the muffler with two and a quarter. And then they had the two duels out the back. It did, it looked good, but it just didn't, it didn't sound, it sounded good too, but it just didn't sound right. You know what I mean? Cause it was stepped down. And uh, it was real cackly, like, I don't know how, probably a dumb word to put it as but it was just didn't it sounded deep but once you got it up higher it just kind of like a rattly noise i know they say some people don't like flow master and stuff like that but i knew it was something to do with that pipe so i ended up i think it was like a month or two later i was at like i said the junkyard found a set of pipes on the on a mustang i cut them off brought them home brought them up here and had uh best friend put it up on the, this lift here and he put them on for me and oh, I mean it was night and day with that thing it sounded so much better and I mean there's nothing done to the car but for being stock it sounded really good it was just insane how just that little bit of difference sounded I don't know I mean maybe it was just me you know just the thinking but I mean it's just all around it's a good car it's fun to drive and it's something I like and that's really all that matters you know don't worry about what people think do your own thing, follow your dreams, you know, a lot of people can hate on this, and, you know, oh, I don't like it, everybody's entitled to opinion, so, you ain't gonna hurt my feelings if you say you don't like it, you're not gonna bother me one bit, you know, I stay to myself, I do my own thing, it doesn't pay to get in all this drama today, and, you know what I mean, if you guys have a car, don't let anybody tell you different, you, if it's a car you like, you do what you want with it. Don't listen to anybody. You do what you want to do. Because if you start doing what other people say, it's not going to be the car you wanted it to be. So just remember that next time. Don't don't fall into it. If somebody wants to talk crap on your car, you know what? I'm not perfect. I don't do everything perfect. This car isn't. was never 100%. Maybe when it was first done. But, you know, I mean, I could have kept this thing stock. But, you know, I like the way the wheels look. So I bought wheels. You know, I mean, it's... It's all in what you want to do. And like I said, don't let anybody talk you out of it. You do what you want to do. You know, if you want to... Even though if, you know, you, somebody says, Oh, it's a stupid car or whatever. Maybe they're just jealous. Maybe they want to one. But enough of that. We'll do, uh, do some more videos on this here. Might be a little bit on this one. But I'll update you if I do anything else. Um, I'm going to finish putting the brakes on. Put the tires back on. And uh, now I'm going to start finish sanding. So, I mean, I can show you maybe do like a time lapse with the GoPro, some sanding, which I don't know, it's kind of boring, but you know, show you guys some things and uh, we'll go from there. So, once we get you know some more parts and stuff in, I'll show you guys the parts and stuff like that. And stay tuned too for the derby videos, we will have plenty more of them, probably a couple coming up soon. And I am also Stay tuned because we are going to do some more aftermaths on my dad's car, which I don't know if we videoed that one. I can't remember if we did or not, but his is a uh, his derby car was a, had a 305 in it, Chevy carbureted with the pipes, and it it is a 98 town car. And then there's another car I want to show you guys. It's actually on the channel. It was that 2008 Crown Vic. We will also do a aftermath of that. Um, I forgot to put these on the channel. It was my fault. We were in a hurry doing three cars for Listy, so we will put them on, so stay tuned for that. Um, then videos will probably be coming here possibly tomorrow or possibly uh, next weekend. So, all right, guys. We'll talk to you next time then. And we will do, like I said, this will be a couple build series. So, I mean, this is going to be, let me know what you think. If not, it's no big deal. You don't have to comment. If you want to, comment. If not, 
it don't bother me any. But, alright, thanks for watching, guys. We'll have some more videos for you here.